Hello everybody and welcome back to Sweet and Sour Soccer and of course this is week three of Championship Predictions. Guys if you watched it before you might be wondering where is Tom this week. He is on holiday so he's not joining for this video but the, his predictions will be in the comments below so do check them out after the video. And let's get straight into this because we're obviously going to talk about firstly last week's points. Ugh, disappointing to say the least. I mean the only positive I can take is the fact that I'm still in the lead but which achieved two points between us. I'm going to put it down to the championship being so unpredictable. It might just be that we're absolutely terrible at predictions. So if you were here to watch some great predictions, accurate predictions, probably come to the wrong place. But for the rest of us that are going to stick with us, let's get into speaking about this. What is another great game to eat, let's be honest. Uh, let's talk about Leeds taking on West Brom first. And Leeds, for me, look very disappointing, actually, compared to what I thought they might do. Of course, we know... They lost quite a lot of um, players. Well, a lot of them seem to go out on loan and it does seem to massively have weakened them. They've also got players maybe throwing a uh, dummies out the pram, so to speak, at the moment, uh, refusing to play for the club or really trying to push a move away. I'm worried for Leeds. I did uh, in my original predictions have them making the playoffs and with ease. I'm starting to question that now. Um, West Brom, on the other hand, um, you know, the scored four, conceded four in their first two. So it does show two things that they're perceptible con to conceding goals, but on the positive, they are able to score goals as well. I think Leeds' down period is going to continue with this one. I've just got a funny feeling I'm going to give it to West Brom. West Brom 2, Leeds 1 is my prediction. Let's move on to speaking about Plymouth now, who take on Southampton. And where should, should we start with Southampton? Because what a game that was. The 4 all draw against Norwich City. Of course, there was two penalties. I think Southampton managed an impressive 31 shots. And um, Adam Armstrong as well, already totaling his uh, tally for the whole of last season. He's managed to do that in just two games weeks. I don't really know what that says about Adam Armstrong, whether he's going to absolutely dominate the championship or, yeah, he really struggled in the Premier League last season. But of course, you know, Saints will be going into it with some confidence. Um, as we know, it shows that they've really got a goal in them and they have got some absolute quality players. But a team that has really impressed me and doing a lot better than I thought they would have is Plymouth Argyle. I heard a funny stat today, actually, that um, actually mentioned Plymouth chose to actually drive down to the game um not drive actually they managed to they decided to get the train to the game last week i've just adjusted the screen i realize i haven't got that pretty banner um but yeah they decided to get the train um their pre-seats booked look they trusted the train system train got cancelled the pre-booked seats weren't available a lot of them had to sit on the floor or stand for quite a few hours that didn't affect them they still managed to get a result against watford and i do think Plymouth's home ground could be a bit of a fortress this season. So this is where it might be a bit of a shock resort. I'm not going to back the uh, the favourites all the time. That didn't serve me well last week. So I'm going to go one all draw. As I say, Plymouth, one of those teams that really, really impressed me in the start of the season. Let's move on to speaking about Blackburn, who take on Hull. And in particular with this game, I'm looking at two goal scorers in particular, um, both of which managed to um, get, uh, you know, impressive uh, goals last week. Um, Samodix from Blackburn, um, obviously he was there last season, but seems to have really come under his own with uh, Brighton Br Diaz, obviously leaving the club. You do wonder, is he going to be able to step up and really fill that hole? But let's not look past Hull City because they've got a goal scorer themselves. Uh, the two-fan hat-trick um, in the last game. But what I will say about both of these teams is they are both conceding as well. Um, I think it was actually Smodix as well, the Blackburn player, also missed the penalty. So it's possible that both of them could have actually had a hat-trick in the last game's week. I think these guys, one of them steps up. They could get the winner for their team. I'm actually going to call another draw here. Um, I'm going to go straight down the middle. I think there'll be goals to each. Let's move on to speaking now about Middlesbrough now, who do take on Huddersfield. And this is two teams that have started the season not well at all. Both sets of teams um, obviously losing both of their first two fixtures. I think they'll be really wanting to try and make a, you know, a, a remark here and pull off a result. If I'm being honest, so I do see Middlesbrough maybe the more likely to, and I do think they'll be really disappointed with how they have started the season. Um, but 
Huddersfield are looking really weak. You know, I don't think even they were perhaps even the worst team in game week two, actually. Um, you know, their fixture. I thought that maybe they, they perhaps deserved at least a result. They didn't get it. I think they're going to struggle. I do think they're going to struggle against Middlesbrough. I'm calling it as a 2-0 win to Borough. Hi guys, just a quick one for me before we get back to the video. If you are enjoying the video, please do me a favour right now because it really does mean a lot. Hit that like button and we're trying to get to 5,000 subscribers. We're getting so, so close. So if you are watching this and you've not subscribed and you do enjoy our predictions, hit that subscribe button too. Now let's get back to speaking about championship predictions. Guys, let's move on to Wednesday, who take on Preston now. And I think this could be another good game. Obviously, Wednesday will look to use that home advantage. Of course, they have lost both of their games so far, but at least they're getting goals. You know, at least they're not losing to a nil result. Preston, they'll be happy, you know, uh, so far. They're beating Sunderland. I thought that was a good result. And then following that up, um, they've also drew to Bristol City. Um... It's going to be a close game, this. I didn't see a whole host of goals in this one. I've realised I'm going to go for another draw here. It feels like a lot of draws, but who knows? I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one in this fixture. Let's move on to speak about... Where's my background gone? There we go. <laughs> right, let's move on to speak about Swansea, who take on Coventry. And this could be a really good game um, because both of them have goals in them. Um, Swansea are obviously scoring goals, but they're also conceding quite a few as well. In fact, when looking at Coventry, their 3-0 win that they got at the weekend, I was really quite paying attention to that because, as we know, obviously, Gaul Carez has left. They've also lost um, Harmer. Hamer, who has been sold. But I was really impressed with the uh, combination of Sheaf and Eccles, who came in for Coventry City, probably were the stars of the show in that game. So it does maybe seem that that midfield hole, they've got it all under control. And of course, it will be interesting to see if that, you know, the sale has allowed and will allow Coventry to spend a bit of money as we get close to the close of the season. Regardless of that, Coventry, for me, looking a decent team. Obviously, they did lose to Leicester, but in week one, they were arguably, uh, they could arguably have put that game to bed if they had been more clinical. Well, they actually were more clinical than the last game, and they did win 3-1. I think it's going to be a uh, throw 3 nil. I think it's going to be a really good game. Um, I do think Swansea are maybe a bit more uh, perceptible to concede in Nova than, Swans, uh, than, than Coventry. So I have actually gone for a 3-1 Coventry win. Let's move on and speak about Bristol City who take on Birmingham next. I'm going to start off by talking about Birmingham because it was really interesting to see their owners, new owners, um, they were on the uh, Football League show talking about how they see the direction of the club going. I think it was promising to, if you're a Birmingham fan to be listening to that. Um, and, you know, Tom Brady also was there in attendance at the weekend, uh, buying up the drinks in the local pubs, tipping heavily as well. And obviously he does seem really interested. And people have called it a bit of a PR stunt. They, they put that to bed and said, no, this is not a PR stunt. This is a genuine move. And I do think the uh, Birmingham City owners do really seem to be fully behind trying to get Birmingham back to the former glory. One thing, the only thing that made me raise my eyebrow slightly was when they did make some comment about how they want everyone from the city to be proud of St. Andrews, no matter who they support. Maybe not following the context of the, um, English football, really. I can't imagine too many Aston Villa fans will be ever saying they're proud of uh, St. James, uh, St. James, St. Uh, St. Andrews, regardless of uh, what happens there. Uh, Bristol City, obviously the loss of Alex Scott for them, but to be fair, it's going to have bring, brought in a lot of income. And of course, he wasn't actually fit for the first two months as well. I think this one could go either way, but I am going to marginally back Birmingham because I do think they've been impressive so far this season. So I am going to go 2-1 to Birmingham. Let's move on and speak about the next team, which is Leicester T City taking on Cardiff. Now, Leicester for me, you know... Uh, I feel like they've got another few gears in them. I really do. I mean, obviously, they've, they've won both games so far, but I do feel they're still in about third gear. I think there's more and much more to come from this team as they get used to the new manager, start putting things together. Um, and I really do wonder if that gear change is going to come in the next game against Cardiff. It won't be an easy game. There are no easy games in the championship. And Cardiff, you know... <sighs> They're going to be a bit disappointed. Obviously, they lost to QPR, which really looked like a weak QPR team in week one. And they'll be really disappointed from that. I, I, I 
got to be honest, I only see this going one way. I am going to give it to Leicester. I'm going to go 2-0 to Leicester. Let's move on. Speaking about QPR, who we did just touch on, obviously, after a disastrous first week um, where things were looking very bleak for them. Uh, QPR might be a little bit more uplifted after getting that win against Cardiff, but they're going to have another difficult game. They're t- they come up against an Ipswich team who are one of not many teams. I think, is there only two? There might only be two or three teams that are now won every uh, both sets of games, which shows how close the championship is in general. But Ipswich have looked and have started one of the stronger teams. They obviously got that impressive win against Stoke. They did have less possession, if I'm not mistaken, but more shots. So it does show that they're, you know, they're using their possession well. Um, people did tip Ipswich to do well this season. And I think those that did tip Ipswich to do well are going to be absolutely correct. Um I do think, um, you know, I was more impressed with QPR last week, but I do think Ipswich are going to have too much for them. 2-0 away win for Ipswich. Let's move on to speak about Stoke, who we just touched on, actually. It's nice how these games are actually flowing. Um, Yeah, I think both teams, actually, Stoke and Watford, will be uh, disappointed with their results um, that they picked up at the weekend. But having said that, both did have more possession. Um, you know, two teams for me that I've, I've actually enjoyed the look of as well so far this season. So, you know, I, I think these are two teams that could be up there or about there. They'll be there or thereabouts. Wouldn't surprise me if even both teams made the playoffs come the end of the season. Um, you know, made both made some uh, nice additions. Watford obviously gone for a bit of a change in transfer policy this year. Um I think this could be another close game. I really do. Um, I think this is going to be a hard one to call. It could go either way. So I'm just going to call it straight down the middle. 1-1 one, one draw. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be... Is this the last game? I think there might be two left, actually. Sunderland, who take on Rotherham. And, of course, with Rotherham, it was, um, you know, Oyedema, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, he was the goal scorer, the hero, but also picked up a red card. And I think that could be detrimental to Rotherham this week. You know, he is the talisman for them. But he is the goal scorer. Hume was also sent off for um, Sunderland, though. But I don't think that maybe will have quite the effect as obviously using Oyadima to Rotherham have compared to, you know, Sunderland losing him. And I do think Sunderland at home, that will give them a bit of a a boost as well. So I am going to go for a home win in this one. I am going to say 2-0 to Sunderland. And I think this is our final fixture. It's Norwich who take on Millwall. And Norwich, let's face it, look like they've got goals in them. Six goals in two games. They're playing well. Maybe conceding a bit too many as well. Of course, it was a 4-4 result against Southampton. Um, but I am liking the look of them. I, I do think Josh Sargent, he was the top goal scorer for them last year. I think he, he looks good. I think just the I was just watching the highlights and I was just so impressed with some of the football they were playing. Things seem to be flowing quite nicely for them this season. Millwall might be disappointed with their home defeat, actually. Um, you know, I, I do worry about Millwall in terms of lack of goals. I think they've definitely got goals in them um, to a degree, but not a lot of goals. And if they do concede, it may be hard for them to then go on and get the result each week. And I do think for that reason that Norwich will have a bit too much for Millwall, just because I think they've got more goals in them. So I am back in Millwall to score, but I do think the final result will be 3-1 to Norwich. Guys, that is our championship predictions for week three. Of course, leave your comments below. Let me know where I went right. Let me know where I went wrong. And hopefully next week, both our scores will be looking a bit better and I will continue to remain in the lead. Guys, if you have enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Please do subscribe to the channel and catch you again. Take care. Goodbye. (laughs) 